What's up guys, Baker here. I am back with another tutorial for After Effects. Are you ready? Today I got the 3D Stro Motion effect and basically what it is is the uh, duplicated uh, skater effect I used in Skate by Baker. Let's take a quick look if you don't remember. All right, one of my all-time favorite edits way back in the day. Let's learn some motherfucking After Effects. All right, let's do this. Okay, first thing is you want to find the perfect clip because this will not work for just any piece of footage. A um, couple tips. You don't want to use a piece of footage that has a camera that's rotating. Uh, you know, maybe panning would be good. Uh, I got I kind of got lucky with this clip because it's you know it's straight on and um, you know just just try not to use this on any piece of footage that's all I'm saying you gotta really find the perfect clip so just to get you up to speed on what I did I pre-composed the clip and I used a warp stabilizer to kind of smooth out the clip a little bit uh, getting rid of any shaking Pre-compose that and I slowed it down with Twixter 50% speed again these two things are optional just kind of you know uh, Some preparation for the clip I guess and then I motion track that in Buju You can use the built-in tracker doesn't matter. I like Buju. It's more I feel it's more accurate and more uh, versatile uh, a couple quick tips for Buju You really want to make sure that your track uh, has the scene geometry lined up really good so like the floor needs to be the exact XZ plane and um, you want to export any nulls that you think would be the most helpful so any any places the skater or the person travels so uh, you can't really see it but I exported a couple of these dots on the ledge a couple on the floor where he's skating and a couple beforehand so you can see that in the uh, these nulls right here. So these will help me out because the trickiest part of this effect is getting the exact position correct, and uh, that's the real real way to sell this effect. All right, let's go ahead and jump right in. First thing you want to do is find the frame where you want the cutout to start. So I want one like right before he jumps. So maybe about here. Let's go ahead and duplicate our clip, command D, trim our clip, alt begin a bracket or open bracket, and then right click, time, freeze frame. Now we should get a perfectly frozen frame of our guy here. And we just need to mask out our person. So I'm gonna go to full res and um, I'll see you guys in a couple minutes. I don't wanna waste your time with uh, some boring masking. All right, see you in a second. All right, another quick tip. Make sure you spend a lot of time making these masks really detailed, especially in this case where I'm gonna go, you know, towards the uh, the subject here and these layers will get close to the camera. So make sure you have, you know, decently HD footage, obviously at least 720p. But if it's just, you know, maybe a simple pan, you don't need to spend too much time on this, but definitely spend more time than I did just there. All right, so let's unsole this layer and we can see our footage. Let's go back to the beginning of this uh, frame by pushing, what is it, I? All right, I remember these shortcuts, it's been a while. All right, so uh, let's find a null object. Well, let's first make this 3D. Let's find a null object that would be the closest to his feet. That's usually where I tend to go to first. So probably this guy. Let's push P and select position and copy. Command C. And our first clip, let's actually rename this. So this is our base clip. And this is our, I don't know, guy one. Whatever you want to call it. Let's push P. Select position and paste. Command V. And look at that. Perfect. All done. 
except uh, you know he's too too big. So let's scale it down. All right, flying upside down now. All right, so that's gonna get us started. Since the null object is kind of on the ground near his feet, we want this anchor point of the layer to be on his feet. So let's push A and just slide this around until this anchor point is right about on his feet, like that. All right, next, the null object is not exactly where I think his feet are. So let's push this back a little bit. So P for position, push it back. Now, if it moves too fast, right, it's very sensitive. You can hold down command and it moves a lot slower. So I'm gonna push it back in Z space a little bit and a little bit to the left. And let's also scale him down again. Since this is so small, let's use command and then drag. It scales a lot slower. So let's take a look at this. So you wanna to try to match him up as best as you can. Now if you notice, this 3D layer is kind of rotated, right? And we want this to face exactly towards the camera, okay? That way the perspective lines up better. So let's just push R and let's rotate it on the Y a little bit, kind of towards that way. Maybe we need to rotate it on the Z a little bit. Now here's a cool trick that I learned a little while ago. If you want to try to line up layers like this and, you know, you could you could turn the opacity down to 50 and try to line it up, but that's kind of tricky. You know, you can't really see that way. Check this out. Take your guy, turn the transfer mode to difference, and it'll subtract the pixels, which means if something ex is exactly the same, you know, on top of it, it'll be black. So let's check it out. Okay, so almost lined up. I think he needs to be pushed to the left a little bit. Okay, kind of like that. And he looks like he's scaled up a little too, no, actually he's rotated wrong. So let's go ahead and rotate this. And I think he's scaled up a little bit too high. So the hardest part, again, is just trying to get this exactly positioned right. So, so you can kind of see these. the more black, the better. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe scale it up a tiny bit more, six, five. Maybe six, two. All right, close enough. So that's the best we're gonna get, okay? So let's just take a RAM preview. Let's set the transfer mode back to normal. And let's see how close we are. So let's take RAM preview. All right, not bad. I mean, I can tell the uh, position's off a little bit. You can kind of see some weird parallax with the the ledge, but again, mess around with it. Try to get the exact position right. Um, let's try another spot because a big issue with this kind of 3D effect is actually shadows. Because if you just have a single layer here, it might not look like it's uh, actually frozen in time. So I'm going to zoom forward a little bit and maybe take a snapshot here. So again, let's repeat this process. What do we do? Base clip, duplicate. Let's rename it to guy2. And then we need to time freeze frame. And we also need to trim. And I might, the order doesn't matter, but I'm going to move this up to the top so it's kind of, you know, you can kind of see the order here. So again, we can solo this if you want. We're going to mask out the guy. I'm going to do this super quick. And when I say super quick, I mean super quick all right so make sure you do a better job than that but I hope you guys get the point so the main thing I want to talk about in this case is um, so let's unsolo so we got the guy here right let's find a quick you know null object that we think will be close probably I don't know this one maybe this one let's just try it out copy position guy to and paste and again we need to oh 3D, right? Do that first and then paste the position. Now we need to fix the anchor point. So let's take the anchor point and uh, let's find his feet, right? Let's also scale it down so we can see him. So there he is. Anchor point. Let's uh, set it to his feet and position it where we think it should be. Again, this takes some trial and error. 
right and scale it down now once you get the scale of the first guy and you and you know it's in the exact right spot you need to use that same scale that way everything else matches up in the scene so that'll kind of give you a clue if uh, it's in the right spot or not because it needs to be the same scale so you can kind of see he's too small so he probably needs to be closer to the camera yada 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 and so I'm gonna skip forward this part a little bit because you just seen me do this beforehand so I'll see you guys in one second alright that lines up pretty good I don't remember if I mentioned this before but when you want this layer to you know face the camera you want to look at these axes right here make sure this blue arrow is pointing exactly towards you and this red arrow is exactly horizontal and this one vertical and so on alright so this one lines up you know decently you just gotta make sure it's in the right spot okay so the main thing I wanted to say here is we need to have a convincing shadow basically right so what you want to do is duplicate this once it's all you know lined up and set we'll call this guy to shadow and we want to take this and rotate it 90 degrees backwards right because that's where the shadow is okay something like that and you know let's try to match it as bet whoa alright hold command again try to match it as best as you can with the other shadow it doesn't have to be perfect because the sun shadows you know the perspectives gonna be kinda weird um, I think your best bet is just make the bottom of the actual guy line up with the bottom of the shadow you know just so you don't get any weird overlapping and then just you know fill it try to let's turn that off real quick let's sample the color of the shadow on the ground something like well something like that right turn it back on and we can see it here you know we can fast blur it a couple pixels I don't know 15 25 something like that right so if we scrub through a little bit it's not perfect but you can kinda see it's supposed to be a 3D shadow of course use a better color maybe use a blending mode and if it looks like it's floating fix the position but you want to try to convince your viewers that there's a 3D shadow here. And of course, you know, the camera flies through these three layers, and that's pretty cool. So, let's recap. Make sure you find the perfect clip. Don't try to do this with just any plain old piece of footage because, you know, you don't want to ruin this effect. You want to make it convincing, you want to make it look cool. All you got to do is 3D motion track your scene, freeze frame a specific shot you want, mask them out, spend a lot of time on positioning it, rotating it, making sure it lines up in 3D space. That is the hardest part of this tutorial, making sure it just lines up in the right position. And that's pretty much it. One extra question I saw is what if the guy's coming towards you and you want the freeze frames to be behind the person? Because if you look at this, right the shot is in front of the guy but what if he's coming towards you and yada 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 here's how you do it it takes a while but it's an easy fix just take your base clip duplicate it put it on the very top and then just mask out your guy and again spend a lot of time but the reason why this takes a long time is because you need to mask this guy out pretty much the entire clip then anytime you have a snapshot in front so you need to make sure your mask is detailed follows the guy and you know all that stuff so now your guy if he was coming towards us is now on top of all the snapshots so that's pretty much the effect it's pretty simple in theory but in practice it's hard to implement so go ahead and mess around with it if you guys make any cool edits with this, feel free to post it in the comments. I'll check it out. If you got any questions, hit me up on Facebook and Twitter. Be sure to like and favorite the video. If you have any other requests on uh, any secret effect I've done in the past, let me know. I'll check it out and try to make a tutorial. And I hope to see you guys next time.
All right, peace.